Uh, it's still 4 a.m. Hey guys, it's Julian. And if you came here just from the anime review, I'm now going to be doing an anime theory because of just how great this series is on book two, Dota, Dragon's Blood. So let's get into this, shall we? All right, so today's anime theory is all about what is going to happen in the next book of Dota, Dragon's Blood at least for book two, and maybe in future books as well. So, let's dive in. All right, first up, if you guys noticed, in my romance corner, I talked about Davion and Princess Mirana. So obviously, I love to see them grow closer in book two. At the end of book one, we saw them departing, going their separate ways, as Princess Mirana was going back to the sanctuary with Luna, all injured, after that devastating defeat by the elves, and Davion was being captured by a bunch of dragon knights. Fimran was, at least what it seemed to be, attempting to a uh, daring rescue for Davion, but we are pretty unclear about it, and it kind of ended on a sour note. So I'd like to see Marana reunite with Davion so that they can rekindle their romance. That being said, Luna, I think, is going to be an interesting character. I feel like she has the potential of being a villain, but also the potential of going on the path of redemption and becoming a really great hero. I'm not sure where the authors want to take this story, but that's two paths that I see lies ahead for her. She can either align herself with the Invoker and Terrorblade, or she can stay with Princess Marana and Davion. Though I have no idea how she feels about Davion because their interactions were quite limited. That being said, Fimran was an interesting character. As I said before, she is not identified currently as a hero, but I'm not quite sure about that. She almost fits the role, in my mind, as the Templar Assassin. Again, I don't know too many details about the Templar Assassin, but I believe she's of elf origin, and her moves kind of mirror that to me at least. So maybe that's what they're alluding to, is that that's what she's going to become in the future, or maybe entirely a new hero entering into the Dota 2 game. I think the possibilities are out there for her, or maybe again, she's just a regular character within the Dota universe. I don't feel like that's the route they're gonna go with her, just because she has some pretty incredible abilities, but it's kind of an open door. Like, I don't really know. Like, they didn't give us anything decisive that we could kind of grasp to, so she's kind of up in the air, but it looks like Fimran still does value Davion and will at least attempt a daring rescue leaving behind the elves, but I'm not entirely sure on that. Another thing was is that we got to see the journey party disband, right? At the end, they had accomplished their mission in helping bring the lotuses back to the sanctuary. Well, almost, back at least to the goddess, and the goddess had accepted them. Well, Davion came back to try and save them from the elf attack, but again, like I said, was captured by the dragon knights and being dragged away. Marana took an injured Luna and has to retreat. I'm not quite sure what she has to do, and she's being asked to leave them. So who knows if she'll take up that mantle, because she still doesn't quite believe she should be in the Goddess's grace. We had Invoker take down the Goddess with the help of Terrorblade. Terrorblade, still seeming like the overall arching enemy, is amassing something and creating deals with people. So I'm not sure where we're going with this, but our big party group has kind of gone their separate ways, and I'm hoping in book two we'll see them come back together as they journey to take on the darkness brewing. Another key point is Davion will have to come to terms with him being half dragon. I know we found out that he was going to die later on, and when he does die, the dragon will come out and be and go on a chaotic rampage which he is terrified of, but I want him to grow more as the Dragon Knight and become more accepting of that dragon side. And I also want to see him be in control of his dragon form. And I think that'd be kind of cool to see him uh, flying around and having the party on his back and traveling around the lands and stuff. I think that'd be a really cool thing. I think that's really far out there, but if, that, if we could see that, that'd be really, really neat. And obviously another big key point is I want to see other Dota heroes enter the fray. I mean, I want to see like Crystal Maiden, Drow Ranger, the Windrunner. I mean, right now it seems to be only mostly elf and human heroes that have entered into the story arc, but I'm also holding out for Ursa, if we could see her 
make an appearance in the anime, I think that would be really cool. And again, if it's not this anime, maybe future books or even their own entire anime based around them. I mean, Axe would be really cool as well to see out there, but we'll see if they want to stick with the human elf type heroes for now, or they'll go more into the other species. But that's still up in the air, I think. So on the topic of Terror Blade, I want to see them expand his role of a villain, you know, kind of have more people amassing under him. It already seems like he has the Invoker on his side, as the Invoker has already captured a dragon, so I feel like Davion will have to go and rescue it in the next book, but first he's got to escape or be rescued. That's the first part of this whole thing. But I kind of want to see more of a Dota-like battle, so I want to see if the anime can form the Radiant and the Dire and actually see heroes on either side. If that does come to pass, I already kind of have a feeling of who we'll see on the Radiant side, being Davion, Princess Marana. I'm still iffy about where Luna is going to be on that battlefield, but on the Dire side, we will see Terra Blade and the Invoker fighting for that end. Luna, like I said, is can be on either side right now, but to have a full 5v5 team right now, we're still missing at least three other characters on either team. And again, Luna is that unknown variable right now, so maybe some teams need uh, only two more players versus another team needs three. So I'm not quite sure where she's going to fit in this. Or heck, it might be a huger battle than just a regular Dota 5v5. So I'm really excited if they can do something like that in the series. Now, like I said, for only book two, I think they'll only cover um, possibly Davion coming more to terms with his dragon form. I feel like Princess Marana will also come to terms with her role and with, with what's going on. We'll see the addition of, like I said, maybe one or two new heroes. Fimrin will either become a hero herself or take up the mantle of such. Um, so that's kind of what I'm expecting in book two. I'm hoping that it's going to span at least four books. Again, this is the same studio that did The Legend of Korra. So if that is any subtle indication, there might be four books in this Dota series. Again, that is complete speculation. I'm completely pulling that out, out of thin air. And like I said, I'm basing that completely on a different works that this studio has done. So who exactly knows? But I'm right now thinking that there will be four books in this series if that's where Valve and Netflix want to take this. Anyway guys, that's a lot of excitement for one night and that's the best that I can theorize because we don't have a lot of foreshadowing going on in this series. Like I said, there's a ton of plot points that they can hit, but it doesn't seem like they've laid the foundation for any one route yet. So we'll have to wait and see. There is no confirmation yet of book two even. We don't know, unlike with Pacific Rim the Black, where they signed for two seasons. I don't know if there's any details about that, so I haven't found out if they've already signed for a book two or not. So we'll wait on Netflix's confirmation, or even Valve. Valve might be the one that jumps the gun and uh, tells us. But for now, I think what they're hoping on is to see how many new players they can bring on from this. I mean, Valve has put a lot of effort into the Dota 2 game and revamping their uh, new player campaigns and whatnot. So definitely check those out if you haven't played Dota 2. And if you are a veteran, Go play those as well because they've got a lot of free items and goodies for you there as well. I sound like a spokesperson for this game, but I am not, but I am a huge Dota fan as well. So, I mean, I enjoy the game and I'll be streaming it occasionally as well. Anyway, guys, that wraps it up about for this theory video. Like I said, it's 4 a.m. I gotta stop doing this. I really gotta stop doing this. Alright, guys, I will see you guys in the next video. Take care now.